what are the, some of the things that people get wrong? What's, what's difficult about using alternative data? Uh, well, there's probably a million mistakes that you can make with um, uh, the use of alternative data, and I, I think we should know because we focus on alternative data so much that we've probably made more than our fair share of them. Uh, so I, I can't talk about all of the difficulties and mistakes, but I can give you a common one that I see people make all the time, especially people that are new to alternative data, which is basically relying too much or exclusively on historical correlations and statistical analysis methods in order to make their projections. And there's a couple of reasons for why that's really problematic with alternative data, unlike with some other um, you know, market data sources that you know, quants use uh, effectively and successfully. Um, you know, it, it's that, one, um, usually there's very little history uh, in an alternative data set, especially a relatively new one, and uh, even fewer correlatable data points because a lot of these things only um, correlate to something on a quarterly basis. And what that means is, is if you're using exclusively statistical mathematical methods, you are very often vastly underestimating or overestimating the uh, precision of the data set uh, that you're using and how prone it is to large breakdowns. And the second biggest problem with relying on uh, math exclusively is that if you're not investing the time to understand the fundamental link between the data set and the KPI that you're trying to check, uh, track uh, with it, um, th you will get things massively wrong when the underlying correlations between the data and the KPI change. And that happens all the time. Uh, a really good example of this is once again COVID and a number of different transactional data sources. Because those of us that work with data know that all data sets have biases, right? None of them are perfect. And the simplest types of biases that happen all the time in panels are regional, demographic, and sales channel biases. Well, it turned out that COVID was the perfect storm of throwing all three of those factors uh, up into the air in uh, unprecedented ways, right? So you had rolling uh, shutdowns of the economy, which made regional trends um, uh, very different. You had fiscal stimulus, which uh, disproportionately benefited lower demographics on a relative basis. And then, of course, you had a massive shift away from brick and mortar towards e-commerce. Uh, which, uh, you know, um, uh, threw a lot of channel uh, correlations uh, up into the air. And so if you didn't understand the fundamental link between the data that you're sampling, uh, essentially, uh, and what you're trying to track, um, you got a lot of things very wrong over the past couple of years, and I know a lot of people did. On the other hand, if you took the time to understand the links and to, to normalize for those situations, you were actually given a phenomenal opportunity. Anyone else like to add to that, uh, things that they see as the, the challenges and, uh, and what people get wrong? Looking at you here, Tony. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've made more than my share of mistakes. You know, I mean, one thing, you know, certainly on the discretionary side, uh, which is a little bit mitigated by a, a more systematic strategy is, um, Unstructured, large amounts of alternative data is in incredibly rich. Uh, but one pitfall of discretionary investing is what we call confirmation bias. And you've got an investment thesis, and you could be prone to find within the data what you're looking for, which is great if you're in the consulting business, but not so good if you're in the investing business. Um, and so really trying to make sure that you can not just interpret the data in a way that conforms to a pre-existing investment thesis, but try to remove that bias and look at the data in an you know, intellectually honest way. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and if you can do that, then maybe it can challenge your uh, conviction and you might decide not to invest in something because you had it wrong, you know, which is difficult for some of us to admit, right? Uh, so I do think that's one of the ways uh, that, you know, people can go astray with the uh, alt data. Yeah, I can mention a few things. I think, um, you know, first of all, there's, you have to treat the data properly, right? If you're not really, you know, fluent at using alternative data, I mean, there, or just data in general, there are a couple pitfalls, such as look at bias, point in time bias, right? You know, survivorship bias. You just, all the data looked great, you know, but you know what? The, the data set has removed all the company that went out of business already, right? So, so, so you know, so you, so that that these are huge issues. Um, another issue is that I mean, alternative data or traditional data, data is just data, right? And data is when it when it comes to the power of predicting a, whether a security will go up or down. I mean, there are multiple things that derives why a security will go up or down. 
data just tells you a vi from a very small angle. It's like you're looking at an elephant through a keyhole, right? Even if you, you, know, you have a perfect view of that through that keyhole and say, okay, this stock will go up. You know what, maybe the Fed you know, come out with some surprisingly hawkish statement that's not factored into it, right? So n never pay, never completely trust one or two or even you know, 10 whatever pieces of data set. You really gotta have, you know, look, you, you gotta have multiple angles to look at your investment portfolio, you know, so you, so you can get a certain amount of um, you know, confidence in, into your investment. Well, and we, sorry. Dan, I'll have one ahead. more. Please uh, do. So I, I'd say with a lot of the alternative data out there, uh, to unlock the value and extract the insights, we need new capabilities. Uh, I think one of the best examples is natural language processing uh, and textual data. And so it's not just the data that's new, it's also the capability that's new. Oftentimes that capability is still being developed and, and might not necessarily be at its, at its best yet quite yet. Um, and how do you know if, if the insights that you're generating from that new capability is actually telling you what you think it's telling you? Uh, that's a big challenge. Mm. 